Hey guys, I'm Laura Canby McCaskill, author of Fallow and Her Keepers, and today I am here with Janine, founder of Our Tiny Farm, and we are here in Etowah, which is close to Hendersonville, Brevard, <laughs> in that area. Um, and we're going to learn about the many donkeys that live here and a lot of other things that Janine has her hands in. Unfortunately, we went into that big real estate bubble, yeah. and that land came for sale when it was just made no sense to do it for a farm. Yeah. We are fortunate that the people that bought that land um, are both similar in nature to us. You'll see we've got horses across the street. They're both kind of farmy mm -hmm. themselves. But for us, it made that our farm stayed a very small farm. <laughs> Thus, we came up with the name of our tiny farm. Mm -hmm. And so, how many mini donkeys do you have here? At this time, we have six. We own two of them, and then we board donkeys. Okay. Uh, there aren't many people that board donkeys. I don't know why, <laughs> but it turns out that, you know, we've, we've always had people here boarding donkeys, and we usually have a waiting list. Okay. Wow, a waiting list. Tell us about your two donkeys. How did you... So we started out with a standard donkey named Hagar that I purchased from a pastor friend of ours many years ago to be a companion to our old Tennessee Walker horse. And Hagar passed away. He had a, something attacked his liver. We'll probably never know what really went wrong. But Hagar, Hagar died. And the farm behind us also raises donkeys. And the girl, she's now a grown woman, about to be married. Oh, wow. <laughs> A young girl noticed, you know, that I was sad, and she wanted to gift us one of their donkeys. Aww. And so for Easter, nine years ago, she gifted me the little brown one, Chester. And then because donkeys really shouldn't be alone, I went and bought Meadow, who may or may not be related to her, came from <laughs> the same farm. Okay. So that's how we ended up with the minis, because Hagar had been a standard, a much taller donkey. And that's how we got started with the minis. Wow. And those minis bonded just as tightly with that old Tennessee walker as Hagar had. Mm -hmm. So they were all very good companions. Oh, wow. So let's get into some mini donkey facts. So what are the difference uh, between a standard and a mini? So a mini donkey, depending, well, all associations agree, 36 inches and under at the withers. So that's measured at the shoulders. Okay. It means they're a mini donkey. There's a little bit of variation as to some associations will say they can go up to 38 inches, but usually above 36, they're considered a small standard. And I forget where the cutoff is for a standard, because then there's also mammoth donkeys. So you've got great big donkeys that are as large as mules, okay. and the standards, which are what most of us think about when we think about a donkey, and then these adorable mini donkeys. And how long do they live? They can live 30, 40, I've even heard 50 years. Oh, wow. This is domestic, where they're cared for mm -hmm. and they get regular veterinary care and yeah. stuff like that. And 
and so I've noticed that in the past few years, a lot of people say, I want to get a mini donkey. That'll be easy to take care of, and it'll be just like a dog. And <laughs> Is that true? No, and that's part of what <laughs> our education is that we do here on this farm, is showing people that they are adorable, mm -hmm. and come visit as much as you want, mm -hmm. but taking care of a mini donkey is just like taking care of a horse. Mm -hmm. So you need a barn, you need shelter, you need hay, you need supplements, you need salt licks for them, um, you need regular farrier visits, that's, mm -hmm. you know, goes and does, takes care of their hooves. We don't shoe our donkeys, but still, about every six weeks, he comes out and trims their, their hooves. You can learn to do it yourself, but you need special equipment, and it has to be done at just the right angle, mm -hmm. so we pay someone to do that. <laughs> yeah. The veterinarian has to come out, and you have the vaccinations that have to take place every year. Mm -hmm. um, and then, heaven forbid, if they have colic no. or have an abscess. Mm -hmm. And then it gets really expensive very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I just tell people it's it's not like when your dog or cat gets sick and you just throw them in the back of the, the car and run to the vet. Mm, yeah. There's a lot more engaged. <laughs> So we always have a trailer that's available to us, mm -hmm. um, and we've had to transport several times. How much would you say they eat? Oh, that's a good question. So we've got six, and if I'm remembering correctly, my husband buys about 120 square bales a year. Mm -hmm. And then they also have access to pasture. Um, so the mini donkeys don't go through the pasture very quickly, so we still have to do some mowing out there, oh, which wow. we never had to do when we had horses. <laughs> but we do rotational grazing out there. Um, we do a little bit of supplement with a forage balancer, which is a low carbohydrate feed that they just get a little of each week. Um, to make sure that they're getting all their nutrition because we don't test all of our hay. Technically, if we were raising show animals, mm -hmm. every time we buy hay, we would send a sample into the state and they would do an analysis of it and let us know what its protein content is and if it's missing anything. Oh, wow. So we just use the, the forage balancer as insurance. Okay. Wow. I didn't know. <laughs> should mention is parasite control. Um. Super important in our environment and it's something that a lot of people don't take seriously enough but I know of too many people who have lost their donkeys or goats um, because they didn't control the parasites and tried to do it with things like just garlic or diatomaceous earth. So that is something that we do on a regular but not we don't do it on a scheduled basis, mm -hmm. but we test their manure on a very regular basis. Yeah. So really fun in the middle of winter, trying to wait for six donkeys <laughs> to poop so that you can put a sample in a plastic bag and <laughs> take it into the lab. Keep that in mind now if you want to. <laughs> and we do each donkey individually because, so some people will just do a sample from all of them all mixed together. But you wouldn't know. We have found with our herd that we usually have one out of the six that has a problem. Mm -hmm. So we then only have to treat that one. So, remember that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now, you accept visitors? We do. We started last spring, we did a fundraiser for Veterans Healing Farm where people could come out and spend an hour with the donkeys with a suggested donation of $10 a piece. Okay. And it was so successful. People loved it. And people said, oh, you should make this part of your farm. So we're in the process right now. It turned out when we called our insurance agent, he was like, you want to do what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, donkeys kick and bite. And I'm like, yeah, that's why we want insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so we try to keep that from happening. It never has. but. Anyway, so it's taken a little bit. We've had to restructure the business a little bit and mm -hmm. work with insurance and find ways to make this work. Um, but we hope by this fall, when we get into the fall tourist season, that we'll be all set up for people to come and visit. And they can find you online. Mm -hmm. What is your website? So it's OurTinyFarmNC.blogspot.com. Okay. And you're on Facebook? We're also on Facebook. Yeah, Instagram. Our Tiny Farm. 
Um, no, we don't have an Instagram okay. at this point. We've got one for the family that touches on it a bit, but yeah, okay. we didn't start one. And I'll list all of those below this video. So if you want to get in touch with Janine or ask her any questions, then you can find those links below. And so you don't just work with many donkeys. You have your hand in a few things, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so we're also beekeepers. Mm -hmm. That's really my husband's job here. Mm -hmm. We used to do a whole bunch of things here on the farm. And that's one of the other things we do is talk to people about doing a little homestead mm -hmm. and transitioning. But a lot of people are like, what does it take to do this? How much money can you make? Is it worth it? So. A lot of times we will consult with people okay. on that. And so with the honey beekeeping, you've been stung before? <laughs> <laughs> Not very often. My husband strives to keep bees that are good around people because again, our farm is small. Mm -hmm. And now our bees live at the Obermiller Strawberry Farm, oh. which is in Horseshoe. And right now they're picking blueberries and blackberries. Mm -hmm. And so we keep our hives there. We have a problem here with ants. Okay. that will attack our hives. And so we moved them over there at one point to kind of give them a break. And it was working out so well, it's just down the road from us. And people like seeing the hives uh -huh. and then buying honey that they know come right from those hives. Okay. And some people swear that that honey tastes like strawberries or blackberries or blueberries. I don't know if it does, <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, that's a plus. <laughs> if they like it. So yeah. it's kind of fun to have our tiny farm honey being sold at the Obermiller's farm. Thank you so much for having me over and for, uh, you know, introducing me to all the little babies. Um, I made some new friends today. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Laura.